Hey guys, it's time for a cheesy YouTube opening. Welcome back. No, I'm just kidding. Jason MX Fever. We are going to review another carburetor tonight. This one actually is from a 200X, 1984. I bought this quad last, or quad, she's crying. Brought this three-wheeler last spring, and it's a basket case. But, like many of you guys that are on here, or watching this, that's what I like to do is buy junk and fix it up and ride it. So, when, this, when I got this three-wheeler, it, uh, it would only run decent with the choke half on. So that tells me a couple of things. The choke is an enrichener, so it's cutting air off to the engine. And it's it was backfiring through the intake, which is a lean misfire. So I took the carburetor off of it. I just tooled her out on it this summer with the choke on. It's, it's whatever. They're, they're two hunters. They're fun to ride. But now I got the time. It's cold. Michigan's stupid. About like... 10 degrees out right now so I'm tinkering this to keep my sanity so I wanted to take this car I took the carb off just just a few minutes ago I have not taken the carburetor apart I thought you guys may um, get a lot out of when I, when I explain the carburetor what I'm looking for and why I'm looking for it so that um, the let's get I guess it's, I just, tongue tied. Okay, let's get the camera in here close because I was really surprised by this. 1984, the screws have never been out. So I brought these pair of vice grips because you guys know, or if you've ever gotten into a carb that somebody's been into a bunch of time, they always strip these things out. The best way to get them, and I'm not going to do it because I'm going to try to throw your screwdriver first, is just latch on them with a pair of vice grips like that, give them a turn. Let's give it a go. Like I said, I have not been into this carb yet. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, now before I take the fuel bowl off, there may be still some gas in here, so forgive me, beautiful bride, if I get gas on our kitchen countertop. <laughs> but I'm looking at the carb trying to figure out, just to understand how things work. So we discussed in the other video the, uh, the effect of the air speeding up, correct, creating a low pressure here that draws the fuel up from the fuel bowl. So I'm looking here, we've got two air bleeds. I don't know what those go to yet. We'll find out in just a minute. One of them has to go to the uh, main jet emulsion tube and the idle jet emulsion tube. Oh wow, that's a little guy. So there is the hole for the fuel mixture screw. I did not touch on this in the last, last one. So there's mixture screws on the carb. If it's on the side with the air box, it is a air mixture screw. If it's on the side going to the engine, it's a fuel mixture screw. So that's what this screw is right here. That's what meters the amount of fuel that comes out of that tiny little hole right there. This screw right here controls your idle. So this is a round slide. As the slide goes up and down, it the screw stops it. It's, you probably won't see it, but there's a small opening right here, and there's, that's what meters your air going to the engine for your idle setting. If I were to turn this in, it would move that slide up, but the, the three-wheeler idles is fine, so I'm not going to mess with it. So, the choke, that's wide open. The thing would lean misfire through the intake and completely fall on its face when it was wide open. If it was in that position, it's got less air going to it, so it's drawing more fuel in through these air bleeds. 
So let's take this apart and see. I have a feeling, so the, the three-wheeler, somebody took a hole saw or something to the silencer, completely gutted it, took, it, took the air box off. So it's getting way more air than it did from the factory. So I think we need to do a jetting change. So the, the intermediate circuit of the carb is in this needle. And most needles have a setting. So there's just that little retainer clip that's in there. I'm just going to push it up to get the needle come out. And somebody's already changed this. <clears throat> so can you see the notches in there? Normally from the factory, they'll be right in the middle. So this sets your, your depth of your needle or your intermediate circuit from, from here to the end of the needle. As it comes out of the main jet, it allows more fuel in. If you lower the clip, it raises the needle, enriches the intermediate circuit. If you drop it down, <clears throat> excuse me, it, it leans out your intermediate circuit. I don't want to be lean because I'm already lean. That's why I took the carb off to take it apart. So let's take the bowl off, see what we got in here. Forgot to the screw. Okay, you definitely want to use this again because this affects the um, vaporization of the fuel that goes into the engine. So you definitely want to put that back on. <clears throat> like like the other carburetor, your float gets stuck. It gets to a point that it comes out. Your float your float needle. I'm gonna take that out so I can see what's going on. I don't have a problem with with fuel on this, but I'm just checking the rubber on the needle or the needle seat here real quick. Looks good. Okay, so now this makes sense. So this is the air bleed for the main jet. You can see it comes in this spot here, comes down this passageway, and then it draws the fuel up into the low pressure created by the Venturi. The other one is for the um, idle circuit. So the air is coming in here, goes down this passageway, draws the fuel up out that teeny little hole right there, so that's what the two air bleeds are for. Normally, there's a separate bleed for the choke, but there's not on this bike because it's a three-wheeler because it's got a throttle plate. So it's restricting the air, forcing more fuel to come out. That's why I know I've got a lean problem. The three-wheel idle is fine, but I'm still going to check the idle jet. Now, a lot of times, because these holes are so small, you got to hold them up to the light. I can see light through it, so I'm not worried about that one. Then this is the main. Got my metric crescent wrench. And it's taking the whole thing out, which is, which is fine. So this is the emulsion tube. Can you see some tiny little holes in there? So what ha what's happening with this emulsion tube is the air is coming in through this air bleed and then it's going into this tube and the air mixes with the gas coming up because an engine will not run on straight fuel. It has to be vaporized or like a mist, like squirt bottle. So the air mixes with the gas coming up through the, through the main jet or the emulsion tube, comes out into the needle opening and then it's a it's a mist as it goes into the engine because gasoline's hard to hard to ignite with just liquid it has to be of, of vapor and if i can see through this which i can leads me to believe that i need to reject this uh, some some folks may say that oh you've got a 
a timing issue. I've taken the timing cover off and the weights and springs are still intact for the vacuum advance. Or not for vacuum advance, for the spark advance. And I may look this up online, but if you look really close on the jet, there's a number. It's 108. So it looks like I'm going to the uh, dirt bike store tomorrow to find a different jet. I'm not going to mess with the slow jet, or idle jet, it's a 40. But I am curious now because it idles so well what the settings are on this. Normally they're one and a half turns out. You're taking a carburetor apart to clean it. Make sure just so you have the same settings when you go back in. Count it. Half. One. One and a half. That's, 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 not, that's a factor setting. So that hasn't been messed with. <clears throat> so when you turn that in, once you feel a little bit of resistance, don't keep cranking it because you'll break the tip of the needle off. I'll take it out so you can see. That's a tiny little needle right there. If you crank that down, you'll break that tip off and that little small hole right, right there, then the carburet, carburetor's junk at that point. So just be careful with that. And don't, there's a spring in here too that keeps tension on it so it doesn't back out. We'll put that back in. Set it back to its original setting. Half, one, one and a half. So that's good to go. So I am going to the part store at the dirt bike store tomorrow. See if I can get some different uh, main jet. I do have one more notch I can move on this uh, needle, but that's not going to make enough difference for as bad as this thing runs with uh, the open airbox and the silencer being cut open. So they basically just gave the engine a bunch more air that it. it can't compensate for with the main jet size and the needle jet that it's got in it. So that's the explanation of a 200X carburetor. I've never been in one of these, but hopefully this helped you, you guys to see what I was looking for, the passages, passages in the carburetor, understanding how they work. And I'm probably going to bump this up what I say this was? 108. Probably going to go at least a couple. I'll get some different sizes and try it out. If it doesn't make it run better through the mid-range after that, then I'm going to start looking at other things. But I'm pretty sure this is a fuel issue. Could be timing. I doubt it. Um, but this is something to rule out that's easy. It took me 10 minutes to get the carb off of it. So thanks for watching, you guys. Uh, give me a like and a subscribe, and stay tuned.